So I'm just going to cut right to the chase. The rumors are true. We're moving back to Japan. Now, I know that this will come as a surprise to a lot of you guys, although I have been telegraphing this for the last few months. So some of you have been kind of reading between the lines and I've been getting emails and messages behind the scenes asking if that's actually the case. Uh, and I'm here to confirm that, yes, it is. We are going to be moving back to Kyoto, Japan in 2024 and establishing Eisei and Kyoto Bonsai Nursery. So what I want to do in this short episode is walk you through the reasoning behind this, how we're going to make all of this happen and the timeline that we're working with. So back in 2017, when my wife and I decided to move back to the United States, we'd been thinking for a couple of years leading up to that point about whether or not we wanted to come back here or whether we wanted to actually stay in Japan and try to build a nursery there. But the problem at that time was, you know, I'm not Japanese, my wife's not Japanese, so it was very difficult for us to get a visa then. And it would have been very difficult for us to found a business without some capital to invest in that. And at that particular time, I didn't have any money. I had just finished my apprenticeship. I had just started traveling around a little bit for a couple of years, building up uh, a little bit of money in the background for uh, potentially an investment in you know, a down payment in a house, but we didn't have additional uh, capital to be able to found a business there. So it was basically an impossibility at that particular time. So we moved back to the States 2017, found this beautiful property here in the US and built out this nursery basically starting in 2018. We actually opened on September 1st, uh, 2018. And over the last five years, we've managed, I think, to build a pretty great number of trees here at the garden. Now that's actually another thing that I wanna mention here too is that Back in 2017, when we were thinking about moving back to the States, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted to come back here and set up this nursery here is because I knew if I stayed in Japan and built a garden there, I could go out and buy beautiful trees just about anywhere. You can find gorgeous plants all over Japan that are already fully developed and you could have a fully stocked nursery uh, right from the get go. Whereas moving back to the States, I knew I would have to build everything from scratch. So if I didn't come back at that time and we had stayed over there, I, I knew I always in the back of my mind would have thought, could I have done it? Could I have actually come back to the States, built out a garden from scratch, built the fencing, built the benches, and most importantly, built the trees from basically nothing, from raw material. So from that perspective, it was an amazing decision, I think, for us to come back here. I've been able to work with the native Yamadori here from the United States. And in just five years, we've been able to build out a, a huge number of quality trees here at the garden. And I hope you guys will agree with me that we've hopefully added something to the American bonsai scene in that short period of time. You know, we couldn't have done any of this without the students who have supported us throughout those years in our intensive classes and to everyone who's joined Bonsai U and to everybody who's watched us on YouTube and supported us that way. Uh, it's been an amazing experience to be here in the United States and, and add just a little bit back to the Bonsai community. So now the question is, why all of a sudden have we reversed course and decided to move back to Japan? Well, back in 2017, when we moved to the States, we didn't have any kids at all. And as a matter of fact, we at that point had decided we would never have kids. We were just going to focus on building the nursery and making this the best place possible and, and focus on the work here. But of course, all of that changed in 2021 when my daughter was born in the midst of the pandemic. And at that particular time, we started to think a lot about how we wanted to raise her, where we wanted to raise her, uh, the cultural milieu and context in which we wanted to raise her and the education that we wanted to give her. And, you know, based on our family dynamic and, and you know, just thinking about the future with our daughter, uh, it made a lot of sense for us to move back to Japan. Now, this isn't to, you know, denigrate anything about the United States. It's been an amazing place to be. It's an amazing place to raise kids, obviously. But for our personal family context, it, it just makes sense for us uh, to be closer to China, where my wife is from originally, closer to, to her mother, who still lives in China. And there are certain aspects of education in Japan that, you know, work well for our family dynamic. So uh, that's one of the main reasons why we really wanted to move back. 
Now we had talked about you know delaying this until my daughter gets into elementary school or middle school or high school, but we realized that to make it fair for her to be able to understand the Japanese language properly and to be able to function in society there, uh, it makes much more sense for us to move back as soon as possible. So this whole thing has kind of come about very very quickly. Uh, so you know we are going to be moving back in 2024. Now just to kind of break down the timeline here, we're gonna be operating our intensive classes here at the nursery for the remainder of this year and in February and March of 2024. Uh, we're not taking on any new students, so I do apologize to everyone who has been on the waiting list for uh, an extended period of time. Uh, we're not gonna be able to take on new students during that period. But once we finish up here in the spring next year, uh, we're gonna sell off the property, sell off the house, all the trees get sold off as well, all the pots, inventory, everything gets sold off. Uh, we'll be moving back in May or early June of 2024. And then at that point, we're going to be building out the brand new nursery. So it's gonna be a much smaller nursery than what we have here. You know, we've got about uh, 10 acres here at ASAN at the moment. About two of those acres are built out as the nursery. Uh, in Japan, this is gonna be closer to probably an eighth of an acre to a quarter of an acre. So a significantly smaller piece of property. Uh, but we're gonna focus on very high quality trees, uh, searching out plants that I've been in love with for years that I've always wanted to have in my personal collection. We're gonna build that out there. And then we are gonna be building an intensive school at ASA in Kyoto. It's gonna be a little different than what we do here currently. Uh, right now we take on a group of students at a time. They're here for about four days each time, a couple times a year. But when we build out ASA in Kyoto, we're gonna design it as more long-term study programs. So we will have the ability to have students in for a week to four weeks, maybe even up to eight weeks. Uh, we'll set up lodging and everything. So this will all come uh, once we get the nursery built and opened up. So timeline for opening the nursery, if everything goes to plan, I'm hoping to have the basic nursery set up uh, by early 2025, maybe spring 2025, uh, and hopefully be able to uh, open to the public and start accepting students at that particular time. Uh, in addition to that, we are gonna be continuing our online Bonsai U platform. So nothing's gonna change there, except for we're gonna be able to feature more Japanese Bonsai professionals, techniques, artists, design, display, everything. So uh, I've already set up with several nurseries around Japan next year to be able to film and interview the professionals there get their behind the scenes take on uh, display setup, for example, Tokokofu, or how to do specific techniques that I'm not personally familiar with, maybe with species that I've never worked with. So I think this is gonna really expand what we're able to do with Bonsai U and be able to provide you with some really cool in-depth information that I haven't been able to give you guys thus far. So I hope that you guys kind of understand uh, where I'm coming from in this move back to Japan. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people may be disappointed that they're not going to be able to study here and work on native Yamadori from the U.S., but there are a lot of other great artists here in the United States, and of course I encourage you guys to, to go study with them uh, any given chance that you have, whether that be a workshop or an intensive class or, or bringing them into your club for a demonstration. But I do hope that you guys will support us going forward, continue to join up on Bonsai U, continue to watch us on YouTube, uh, and, and hopefully some of you guys will be able to actually come to Japan experience the culture there with us in the former capital of Japan, Kyoto City, which in my opinion is the most beautiful city in the world, uh, and get to work on some amazing trees uh, at Eisei and Kyoto going forward. So thank you guys so much for checking out this short episode here. Uh, I look forward to uh, continuing to work with you in the United States for the next few months and uh, work with you guys in Japan in uh, 2025 going forward. So I uh, look forward to seeing all of you guys soon and until then, take care.